Hi everybody, it's Richard here again and welcome to uh, my final video of my little series of the top three albums for five consecutive years from 1965 to 1989. Um, the reason I picked that uh, uh, span is probably because it's the one from those years that I'm really most knowledgeable about. In fact, taken from 85 to 89, not quite as knowledgeable, so 65 to 84 would probably be my real period. I consider going on after the 90s, but I don't know. I, I, I'm not as well versed, to be quite honest with you. So, this one is the last one. This is 1970, 70, yeah, to 1974. And to be honest, it's my favourite period. So it is. It's 19, uh, this is when I really, well, when I was first introduced to music when I was a kid. And um, that there, even though it was singles, it sort of stuck with me. And um, I think this is when an awful lot of fantastic albums were released. So there's going to be a little bit of a surprise for one of the years because... I'll let you know when I get to it, it's my favourite year of all time for music. So, anyway, to start off, 1970 and the third best album. Just before I go on again, each of these years I could have picked about 20 albums at least. And they're all fantastic, so it's very, very difficult to whittle them all down. And there's ones that I have left out, which I feel guilty about leaving out, but, you know, that's, that's the way the cookie crumbles. So for number three for 1970, I am going to give this to Van Morrison's Moondance. I've showed this before in a previous video. Um, this is an album where side one is often played more by people than side two, which is a shame because side two is every bit as good. It features a material like uh, Anna Stoned Me, Crazy Love, Moondance, Into the Mystic, one of the greatest songs ever written. Um, even on side two you have uh, Come Running, which was actually the single off this. Um, uh, Brand New Day, uh, These Dreams of You. It's a fantastic album. It's Van Morrison's most accessible album. He released another one this year as well. Um, it's Banded in the Street Choir, which I think is a companion piece to this and it's nearly as good. But for this uh, ranking video, this gets number three from 1970. Number two from 1970, and this is what I regard as the best solo Beatles album, end of. And I don't think it's what you're thinking. A lot of people know it's not what you're thinking. McCartney. I have never heard such a warm album. This is so, I love this. It's him in the studio tinkering about he's trying to get over the Beatles and it sounds as if he's having fantastic fun it's seriously fragmented but it's so warm and a homely album that would be something is magnificent every night is oh that would have been a, a Beatles classic as would maybe I'm amazed um, hottest son is fun if you ever hear Nusha Fox actually recorded that with lyrics um, and released it as a single back in about 79 or 1980 or something which is very good it's extremely catchy uh, tune Junk which came from the White Album Sessions is beautiful and Man We Was Lonely is like a wee country type stump which I, lo I just love this album um, and that's obviously the back cover which is more famous and I would prefer that to be in the front cover but still this is a brilliant album and it only manages to get to number two because the number one for 1970 is what I call the second best album ever released. And that's Simon Garfunkel's Bridge Over Trouble Water. This is immense. The title track sung by Art and Art Alone. Which I don't actually think that's the case because in the Sail on Silver Girl bit, the first couple of lines, I think Paul Simon's part of those vocals. I think I'm the only one in the world that thinks that and I can't 
get, I've, I've tried to research it and I've found nothing, but if you hear it, there's like a deeper voice in there. It's not just art. I'm, I'm positive. The Boxer, brilliant. Um, Cecilia, brilliant. Everything on this is brilliant. Even the cover of Bye Bye Love with the clapping the whole way through. It just works so well. Um, and now I can't look at this car. I love this car, but I can't look at it without seeing that there. Art Garfunkel's huge moustache. So <laughs> that was highlighted a few years back. And I just can't see it without this big Mexican moustache that he's got. But yeah, the, the, the weakest song which I used to think was so long, Frank Lloyd Wright, but I absolutely adore it as well. Like it's, there's nothing off this as bad. This is a really, really strong album and it's the best that Paul Simon ever done and it's the best album ever to come out of America, in my book. Second best album of all time, I think. Okay, 1971, number three, Led Zeppelin four. What is there to say about this? Um, I've really only come into Led Zeppelin quite recently, within the past couple of years, and this blew me away. So things like um, uh, Stairway to Heaven, I'm not sick of because I, I knew it, and I would hear it about once every three years, but I wasn't overly familiar with it, so that's it's refreshing for me. Rock and Roll, brilliant song, Black Dog, although I still think it's a bit of a steal from uh, Fleetwood Mac's Oh Well structure of it anyway brilliant going to california brilliant yeah love this um as i say it's only recently that i've been hitting black sabbath so number three for 1971 number two for 71 boys hunky dory i've talked about this before i've also said it would have been better if one song um song for bob dylan had it been taken off and replaced by shadow man but I'm only sort of being picky here. Fantastic album. And it showed the way it was going for the next album with the song Queen Bitch. Um, the single changes didn't chart at all until after he died, which got the number 40 something. And then Life on Mars about a year and a half later, um, obviously got top five. This album didn't chart either at the time of release. It was actually after the, the Ziggy album, and when, especially al after um, Aladdin Sane, whenever he was really blown into the stratosphere that this done extremely well. And it's done about number three. So that's my number two for 71. My number one for 71, I'm going to give it to T-Rex's Electric Warrior. Get it on, Jeepster, brilliant singles. Um, this is it's probably my second favourite bowl bowling album. Um, but it's the one that everyone goes to. Mambo Sons, incredible. Life's a Gas is incredible. Even Rip Off, which has got a little bit of a, how would I say, um, a little bit of a rappy feel to it, is also incredible. Love this album. Um, it's my favourite for 71. Okay. 1972 and the third best album. Paul Simon is... It's not It's not actually his debut solo album because he had one and I featured it in 1965 But it's the one people relate to as his debut album This is another masterpiece uh, Mother and Child Reunion, Me and Julio Down by the Schoolyard Duncan, Peace Like a River Congratulations is beautiful The only song I'm not too keen on is Paranoia Blues which is a bit bog standard But I don't think he ever beat this, he came close with Graceland but to me, this is and coming off um, the back of the lushness of Bridge Over Troubled Water. This is a very stripped back album, but it's wonderful. So number two for 1972 is Lou Reed's Transformer, produced by Mick Ronson and David Bowie. Um, I've talked about this as well before, Walking the Wild Side, Satellite of Love. Perfect Day and Vicious are the big ones, but there's also great songs like I'm So Free, Andy's Chest, I think is hilarious, Makeup, um, Good Night Ladies, great, and then the very short but extremely catchy New York Telephone Conversation. Yeah, this is Lou Reed's finest moment, I believe, and deserves to be number two. And the best album of 72, Bowie's Ziggy Stardust. Um, 
yeah, fantastic. Again, being very uh, highly critical, I always find there's something that I would have replaced, and that's the song It Ain't Easy. I know we had a song, Velvet Goldbine, that was recorded around the same time, I think it would have worked better. But apart from that, again, I'm being picky. From the uh, faded in drum intro of, of five years to the big blowout at the end of Rock and Roll Suicide, this um, is regarded as one of the finest rock albums ever, and quite rightly too. I love it, and it's the best of 1972. Okay, the surprise is 1973. Um, 73 is my favourite year for music of all time, so rather than do, that's why I race through these, um, even though I'm still over 10 minutes, goodness, I'm going to do 10, sorry, for 73, the top 10, and to show how difficult it is, I have written down 56 albums to pick from, from 73, just shows how good it was. So I'm going to go for number 10. 73, Genesis, Selling England by the Pound, great album, Birth of Fifth is unbelievable. Um, more Fool Me with Phil Collins on vocal I think is brilliant as well, as is obviously Dancing with the Moonlight Night and the single uh, I Know What I Like in Your Wardrobe. Uh, the Cinema Box, another great song. This is Genesis Best with the Peter Gabriel era, so that's my number 10. Number nine, Lou Reed again, Berlin, dark, sleazy, disturbing, but highly enjoyable. Um, this one makes you sit up and listen. Um, it's a complete miles away from Transformer, but it's every bit as good. Well, not quite, but it's still up there. Number nine. Number eight, and this works out as my third favourite solo Beatles album of all time and my favourite John Lennon album, Mind Games. I love this. This doesn't get anywhere near the credit it deserves. Out the Blue is fantastic. It's one of the most beautiful ballads he's ever written. I Know I Know, great. Tight as, good fun song. Mind Games is epic. Bring On The Lucy is, I know it's in your face, but it's got a little more subtlety than you think. Um, yeah, Azima Zen, um, You Are Here, There's Nothing Off This Is Bad, I really love this album. It's the first John Lennon album I ever heard, and it's remained my favourite. Okay, number 7 of 73 is Mike Oldfield's Tubular Bells. Um, uh, this is just, I can't talk about the tracks because it's Tubular Bells 1 and 2, but it features, you know, the theme from The Exorcist. Also has Sailor's Hornpipe at the end, but this is just a, a really, this is an ingenious album. I do love the, the bass type uh, countdown with all the instruments at the end of side one before it ends with, you know, the, the tubular bells banging away. <laughs> this is a fantastic album, it really is. It's one that has probably served better on CD, to be quite honest with you. Um, but yeah, Tubular Bells. He's done just as good as this. This is not necessarily my favourite album of his. He has done better ones, but yeah, it's up there. Okay, number six then, and no surprise, Dark Side of the Moon, Pink Floyd. Not a lot to say about this. My favourite on this is um, the Brain Damage with Eclipse at the end. Um, also, Money is great. Awesome Name is great. The Great Gig in the Sky, I love, love the vocals and that. It's just fantastic Floyd album. It's not my favourite Floyd album, but it's up there. So that's Dark Side of the Moon. Number five, the second best solo Beatles, as we call it, even though it's Wings, Band on the Run. Um, side two of this I absolutely love. Um, I love my moon. Yeah, there's, I think this is the closest to a Beatles album as you can get. And the reason I'm saying that is some of the songs are reminiscent of other uh, solo Beatles songs. For example, Let Me Roll, it sounds like John Lennon. Okay, it's Paul singing, but it sounds like a John Lennon song. No Words sounds like a George Harrison song. To, to my ears, anyway. And Picasso's Last Stand sounds like something Ringo Starr would sing. 
So if the Beatles had a been going and Paul had written that, I'm sure that would have been a Ringo Starr logo. Band on the Run, fantastic. Jet, fantastic. Mrs. Vanderbilt, I love as well. Mamunia, I think I mentioned. Love it. 1985 or 1985, I should say. Used to be my least favourite. Now I think it's probably my favourite on the album. Great album, great cover, and it's my second favourite solo Beatles. And that is number five. Number four, T-Rex Tanks. That's my favourite T-Rex album. No singles, but absolutely love it. There's there's a feel to this um, that's different than any other T-Rex album. And uh, Rabbits, I've mentioned before, it's just amazing. Born to Boogie is a great song. Highway Knees. The Street and the Bay of Shadow has got horns through it. And it's so different for T-Rex. I just love this album and I love that cover as well. So that's T-Rex number five, four, sorry. Okay, number three, The Rolling Stones, Goat's Head Soup. That's my favorite Stones album. Um, I know a lot of people rank this in the middle of the Stones catalog, but this is their most diverse album ever. Winter sounds like a Van Morrison song. Angie's beautiful. Uh, Silver Train, reminiscent of All Down the Line from Exile on Main Street, but I think it's better. Uh, I don't know why I'm looking at this because there's, still, there's no song titles at the back. I'm trying to think here. A uh, Hundred Years Ago, another great sort of Mick Taylor inspired song. Do 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 Heartbreaker. Um, brilliant as well. Um, it's got a funky edge to it. Dancing with Mr. D is. The opener, which is a very lazy opener, but I thoroughly enjoy it. There's nothing off this um, I don't like. Can you hear the music, for example? It sounds like something from 1967, and it's great. And Star Star with its immortal star fucker line. Brilliant. Love it. Joan Jett does a quite a good version of it as well, by the way. So that's my number three from 73. Um, my favourite Stones album of all time. Number two from 73, and that's Elton's Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. Double album. Um, very little filler, mostly all killer. Um, side one's perfect. Funeral for a friend leading into Love Lives Bleeding. Possibly the best thing he's ever done. The big hit singles, Candle in the Wind. Um, Saturday Night's All Right for Fighting and the title track are magnificent. Um, I do like the song, the side three, I really do like. Sweet Painted Lady about Prostitute is fantastic. Uh, Dirty Little Girl, I, I think it's hilarious. And All the Young Girls Love Alice, I actually like it. I think it's about lesbian love, well it is about lesbian love. But the, the reason I like it is that the, the verses are fast and furious and the chorus is all slowed down and it's usually the other way around. And I just think it works so well. Uh, Harmony is a great song. Um, side 2 is a little bit weaker, but it still has some great stuff like uh, the song has no title and the reggae influence to make a jerk off, which is fun. So that's the number 2 and probably Elton's best. So number 1 of 73 and that's really no surprise. And it's Bowie's second best album is Aladdin Sane. The Gene Genie, Driving Saturday. I've talked about this before. This is... Bowie goes to America and picks up, or Ziggy goes to America and picks up Mike Garson and transforms him. Uh, there's not a weak song off here. Just, I was just want to give extra credit to the version of Let's Spend the Night Together, which took me years to really, really like. Uh, but it's completely bonkers and it's finally hit me. Uh, Lady Growing Soul is gorgeous. Panic in Detroit has got a great driving riff, as is What's That Man. But um, favourite off here is probably the single drive on Saturday, which I adore. So that was my extra special 1973 with 10 albums, which leads me into 74. And the last three albums I'll be showing in this series. And the third best is Slade and Flame, which I recently showed on uh, my Slade ranking. Yeah, Far Far Away, How Does It Feel? I don't think I mentioned the song, uh, where is it? Uh, summer song, wishing you were here. And that's just pure Beatles. It's, it's brilliant. It's so catchy. Um, it was the other one as well. Uh, standing in the corner is great with the at uh, the horns. This kind of monkey can't sing. It's got a great drum intro. 
I love it. Um, it is a rock album, but it's not a heavy rock album. It's, it is more like a, a Beatles type album. They did go heavier after this, well, two albums after this, but so this is my number three for 74. My number two for 74, Queen 2, the prog album. I made a complete balls of this whenever I was describing it as side one and two. I should be describing it as side white and side black when I went through the, the Queen discography. And I said loser gone wild and said loser in the end for the John, uh, the Roger Taylor song. Side two of this is perfect, or side black of this is perfect because it's all Freddie Mercury material. Um, the Fairy Teller's Masterstroke, I've got it in the end. I love going into Nevermore. Um, March the Black Queen, um, obviously Seven Seas Arrive, Funny How Love Is. The whole of this side uh, black is great, side white is just as good. Not quite, but nearly there. Uh, with Father to Son, um, I can't even remember the name of Sunday One Day, the, the Brian May acoustic. Love this album, and this is probably the second best Queen album. It is the second best Queen album. So, the last one of this series, and how appropriate, because I'm showing you the best album of 74, the best album of all time. I've said it before, and I'm sticking with it, it's Diamond Dogs. David Bowie, I'm not going to say much about it, but perfection. There you go. So, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. I hope you enjoyed the little series. And I'll start getting my brain into action of what else I can do. Um, so, for now, I wish you all um, a very happy Easter. Enjoy the holidays if you're off, which I am, thank goodness. Not back till... Tuesday night and um, if you like this video hit up the like button and if you wish to subscribe, uh, subscribe by all means do so all the best for now bye bye